I'm gonna start again. <laughs> start again, start again. Hi everybody, welcome to Dot the Doc. Uh, I'm Ian, uh, I'm joined as always by Matt. Hello! <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back, yeah, we're um... It's been a while, it's been like almost almost a year I think. Um, the band so... is back. What was that? The band is back together. The band is back together. Like, you take away restrictions, then nobody's got any free time anymore. It's... <laughs> But luckily, we're all back in it now, so yeah, we've got time to talk about docs, so let's do it. Today, we're going to be talking about Catfish, um, 2010 documentary. Um, you must have seen it. It's quite a famous documentary. If you haven't seen it, this is going to spoil the hell out of the documentary for you. So yeah, um, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's on Netflix. Um, you probably find it, find it on YouTube or something as well. Um, yeah, you can find it everywhere. It's kind of a documentary that got a lot of people into documentaries. It was like one of the first kind of big, almost like you could call it like almost a blockbuster documentary. Um, I'd say a lot of people that didn't watch docs before that, probably that opened their eyes to documentaries. Um, at yeah. least I, anyway. I, I, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I remember when it first came out and I remember the whole thing around it. I remember it being advertised almost as like a, it felt like a thriller um, yeah. because the poster for it, I remember seeing it and it said like, it had like catfish and it said, don't let anybody tell you what it is. That mm -hmm. was the tagline for it. Yeah. And the whole mystery surrounding it was like, you can't tell anybody the ending of it. You can't, um, it's the journey you need to go on. And luckily uh back, well because obviously this um launched the term of catfish you know like catfishing like someone um so i think now it wouldn't be such a surprise because everybody knows the term catfishing um yeah. so i imagine the big reveal at the end probably wouldn't be that much of a surprise um and plus you got the honest, mtv like, show as well so to be honest like watching it all these years after like like trying to think back to when I first watched this documentary and how shocking it was. Whereas watching it this time around, it's it's almost like, okay, well, this is kind of normal online activity nowadays. Like there's, there's the shock value has completely disappeared because it's so kind of normalized now. Like, and the way, it, even when people aren't catfishing, they're not necessarily themselves on their social yeah. media and so it's the the shock value now like it kind of it's crazy to think how much since then like social media has taken over even more than it had then and and it has it it takes the shock value away completely for me yeah i feel like it it wouldn't have that much of an impact now if you watched it it's still a fun documentary to watch and there's still the question of whether or not it is a documentary, we'll get into mm. that in a bit. But um, yeah. there's a whole controversy um, behind that. Um, but I've got I quite must different thoughts on that. On that, yeah. As well. So have I. I've, I've definitely watching it through like, like almost a ten year, like you know, lens, like a different like lens now. Because well, I remember when I first watched it, I was like so on edge towards like the end yep. of the documentary. I was like really. Uh, it's like suspenseful when it comes to like them going to the farm there's like the yep. bit where they go to the farm go up to the window and i expected yep. them to so be scary, like murdered was... or something oh. <laughs> like, yeah. it was uh that's the thing like that's the one thing i didn't have this time um watching it because obviously i've seen it before i knew the whole thing behind it and that um but i don't know i think i think that was the fun part about it and i love i remember I watched it and I forced pretty much other people to watch it around me. And we, I must've watched it like three or four times within the first weekend that I managed to get hold of it. Um, like I yeah. think it was on Netflix when it came out on Netflix or um, one of the streaming services at the time, I was like, Oh, you need to watch this and watching people watch it was like an experience on its own. It was so good. Um, I remember people being like, 
on edge watching it Espe always around the kind of farm bit the farm bit and as soon as he goes up to the house you just feel so uncomfortable and to us i must admit i've still felt uncomfortable watching him go to the door like and kind of the even though i knew the whole punchline of it but yeah i yeah i don't know it's um i must admit this this documentary must have like it definitely uh influenced how um the use of social media within documentaries so like you can tell that uh stuff like don't fuck with cats and um and was it like american murder that was uh that came out recently they're all kind of like social media kind of using um you know facebook and messaging as like a as a plot device um yeah and this does it i must admit catfish does it so well like oh brilliantly <laughs> Brilliant. Used the like, use of Google Earth as well, and made it kind of like the whole like uh, clicking the icons and like watching uh, was it like the Universal logo and stuff like that. That's I just yeah. love it. It's such a cool little. It's very it just... good, but it's also as well. It like again, you wouldn't think of it at the time when it first came out, but looking back on it now, it's almost like a massive advertisement, like in its own way for social media and. And all these different things through Google and stuff like that. Like, there's there's so much of it that I realised when watching it again the other night. And it had been a long, long time since I last seen it. Um, and I always remember enjoying it. But yeah, this time round, like, it was like looking at, looking at it through different eyes. Um, and yeah, like, it almost felt like a whole new experience. Um, whereas sometimes, like, I I can not watch a documentary for years i'll go back in and i'll have the exact same experience than that i did the first time round um you know if there's no mystery aspect to it then i'm just i'm viewing the same thing i'm getting the same feelings from the same from the same thing whereas this time round it was it was like i was more skeptical um this time round i was I just picked up and noticed more different things within the documentary. Um, and I, I don't know whether that's, whether that's a, a thing of just like, oh, well, you know, I, I'm that bit older now. I've had that much more experience now. Or whether it is just we're wiser to the world of, of the internet and social media now than we were back then. Um, it's, yeah, it's, um, it was definitely a good experience watching it this time around. Yeah, I, I still enjoyed it. And I must admit, like, as you said, like, uh, you are careful about this when it comes to, like, say, if you online dating, um, you have to be aware of this kind of thing. Like, you, if the pictures are too good to be true, you're not seeing, like, you're only seeing, like, two pictures from the same person. It's... Uh, but then again, this defeats that idea as well, because there's so many pictures like that uh angela uses she's obviously created like f um 15 different profiles for different people yep. and it's just so elaborate that i think honestly if you met someone through this then uh through like online dating and they go through all that effort you probably will get fooled like right now yep. um there's i mean I, the kind of casual i mean i don't know if you've watched the catfish tv show which yeah i've seen is, some like, just, i, 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 I don't I don't rate it in comparison to this documentary. Um, it's, no. it's night and day. But I also, I had a feeling on the TV show as well, where I was like, I mean, I've not seen the TV show in a long time either, but mm. I remember watching it and it was, it almost felt glorified. Like, and when I watched this again the other night, like it really made me think like, after this whole experience, I, I couldn't quite understand like, like with Neve, like it's almost like this opened up a door to him with mm. MTV to make a lot of money. Um, and he grabbed it, which, you know, you can't blame him for that. But also, like, if he really had this bad experience, like, I don't know, it just it just doesn't gel to me it, from going from this to that. Like well, it just Because they gel. just wanted to recreate the because it what it costs 30 grand to make this uh documentary that's what it, yeah thirty thousand dollars to make and um it made three million 
Yeah. Like in the end. And well, I mean, from what I see in anyway, three million when it opened. And I I can see I can see why MTV did this. It's like honestly, it's like just pure binge TV. Like you'll watch it regardless, oh. even if you're not you know, yeah. like because you all you want to see is that little bit at the end. That's all you want to yeah. see. Like um it is, it's almost like you know, like shows like your um, I don't know, Geordie Shore and stuff like that, where it's mm. kind of it's it's reality TV, but not reality TV. It, it, like things are amped up a bit. Like everything's dialed to eleven, and yeah. that's what the Catfish TV show feels like as well. It almost feels like, okay, yeah, maybe these two individuals have met online, and one of them's been lying to the other. But when it when the cameras are on, it's almost like, okay, now it's time to to get you know really get in that acting mode and act everything up 100% more than it is, like, for the cameras uh, to make good TV. Yeah. Um, or trash TV, <laughs> like, whatever way you want to look at it. Um, but that's still what I don't understand is, like, I, it just it doesn't gel with me that, like, Neve had this whole experience and in this initial documentary, and he obviously felt quite bad about what happened, um, but he also felt, or, or I think at least, he felt some kind of, like, he felt sorry for Angela by the end of it as well. Or as much mm. as he was hurt, he felt sorry for her. But then he's, like, gone on to make this thing where it's, like, it's calling these people out and it's, there is there is no, like, oh, feel sorry for them. It's, it's almost like a witch hunt. Um mm. Yeah, I don't know. It's funny you should say that because oh, it's it's apparently always the catfisher who contacts the show on that to uh, to reveal because it's like, oh, hey, I've been pretending to be someone else for X amount of time, like talking yeah. for years. But anyway, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves on on this. <laughs> but um, so do what are your thoughts in terms of the authenticity of this documentary? Right, when I first watched it, like the very first time. Like a hook line, it had me hook line and sinker, no doubt about it. And then, like, I remember within probably even within the first year of it being released, I'd watched it a lot, like, because I really enjoyed the documentary. And I still do. I, I think it is a good, it's a good piece of work. Like, I think it is good. Um, but I remember before, like, I did have sort of niggling doubts, like, but nothing major. Then watching it this time round, like, there's a lot that says to me that it there's parts that feel staged. Um, even the bits like towards the end where where they go to the house and he he need meets at Angela. And the fact that she's so willing to be on camera and so willing to just have everything, everything about all that's happened put out there, like. Like, what does she get from that? Like, but then I, I, like, I almost thought as well. Like, there's parts in it where I thought, like, Angela almost comes across as an actress. Like, she's very good, and maybe her sort of payment through this is, like, Neve and the gang say, okay, well, you know, if, if you do this for us, your artwork will be seen by millions of people. And I've seen like she she opened she opened up like a a website for her art uh, not long after. Mm. So yeah, like there's a lot that doesn't quite add up to me. And I know that like I've read like articles uh, from around that time where it came out, where people were kind of sussing that it there might be, you know, a little bit of like kind of a setup to it, and. And Neve and, and Neve's brother um, said, "Well, well, my brother, well, Neve's brother would say my brother must be the best actor in the world if if it's not real." Um, and but I I tend to find in any articles I see they they say um, when when they're called out for it being fake they say it's a film based on a true story on something that really happened. So is that saying that okay this this may have happened to Neve, but then they've got an idea to create this documentary or mockumentary, whatever you want to call it, mm. to kind of 
show the world that. So it is true in the sense it's based off of something true, but perhaps not in terms of the people. I mean, there's always going to be elements where the, some of the documentaries are staged in a way to make it more interesting in the storytelling sense. Um, yeah. I, for example, I do feel like the part where they're checking out her songs, like she's sending songs and they're like, oh, send, write, write a song about a horse and all that stuff. I think that seems like genuine from what from you know when them finding out stuff um but i do feel like they they knew about the whole thing way before i i feel like the they played ignorance on like a lot of it and i maybe feel like um maybe some of the bits where they're like unpacking at the beginning of the documentary well, i think a lot of the beginning of the documentary was shot after the fact that's yeah. what I, from from what I can from what I, from what I can see. Um, but I I don't know. I'm just just thinking like how I'd how I'd do it and stuff because like the big question is why did they start filming in the first place. The first the, I think the whole gist of it was they wanted to explore Abby's and Neve's relationship, but yeah. then it kind of seems like what it doesn't. I I feel like they must have known something was up when they started filming. Um, yeah, and that's yeah, a good. Do you want? Like, like you don't just surely you because again like I've seen them speak about this in in uh, like interviews and things and they say oh you know we're we're them guys that would always have a video camera on like we've been doing it since we were teenagers always like filming each other this that and the other which you can you can understand like lots of people do um, but you don't just wake up one day and go okay now we're making a movie now we're making a documentary. Um, there's just a lot of that side of it that just feels almost too good to be true. Like mm. they just had had this like gold dust fall into their hands, like, and then from there, like, because I I even feel there's a part in the documentary where like Neve's getting a bit upset about his life being on display and being filmed, and even that feels a little forced. Yeah, it feels yeah, like I, like I thought that as well. He almost had to put that in there to, you know, it's like, oh, I'm, well, I'm having such a bad time. Like, mm. it just feels very forced. And, like, I, th I think if you didn't have that part in there, it, it would make it more believable. But it almost felt like they felt they had to put a part like that in there. Like, because from their thinking, like, they're, they're probably thinking, well, this is how someone would react to this. So therefore we need to put this in there. Otherwise it's less believable, but sometimes less is more. There's a part like, so there's two parts like that. And from what I remember in the documentary, it's kind of like early on is like him reluctant to, to do anything, it seems. And then there's one later on after they've, you know, explored this whole thing, filmed the whole thing. And he's kind of fed up. He doesn't want to be filmed anymore. Like at the end, he's like, Oh, that kind of thing. Yeah. Whereas, it, I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me because they know that they were making this into a documentary by that point anyway. So, like, him being a bit stubborn about him being filmed towards the end, it kind of seems a bit after the fact, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and, like, he even says in, in one of those parts that um, he was forced into doing it. Like, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, you, you made me do this. Like, and it just, yeah, there's just... I, when I watched it the other night, I was just like, oh, it just something doesn't ring true about all of that like yeah the strangest part for me was i think i think the only reason i can think of them starting filming is because they're sent um you know he gets like sent a photo he gets to send a painting of the photo he's taken and that's yeah. that's the reason why they started but then he starts it makes me think why is angela sending so many prints and stuff to him it's just like so much i think it's obviously for exposure for her artwork because i yeah. know that she's probably trying to drag herself out of that lifestyle that she's in at that time um she you know she thinks this is her opening she's sending it to someone who's um a published photographer in you know uh like in papers and stuff and, and magazines and yeah. this you know this could drag her out of her, you know, this could like become like her dream lifestyle. Like, so I can see where that's coming from, but I feel where she went wrong was, uh, I don't know. And like the one strange thing for me is 
why would the whole family add him on Facebook? Like, yeah. like everybody just seems to add him, and it seems so bizarre. Um, I I just don't understand. I can I can understand Abby's mum, like Angela, like adding him on Facebook. Fair enough. Like, um, that's fine. Maybe a message from Vince, like you know, oh, yep. you know, thanks for supporting my daughter's work and all that stuff. But I just don't understand why it'd be the sister, probably sister's best friend, her friend, and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. I know. I I know. Even I just think the whole Megan thing seems a bit far fetched. Why he went to, like, why she would just randomly add add him and stuff. Yeah. Um, well, it just seems. Sorry, I was gonna, just going to say as well. Like, whilst we're on the track of like the whole, is it real? Isn't it real? Um, like when watching it the other night, like towards the end, uh, Vince like coins the phrase uh, catfish and he has this whole speech and it feels like a pivotal part of the entire film. Um, but like I got from that, like what, because I haven't got it word for word, but he basically says that catfish are needed in this world, like they they keep you on your toes and they keep you thinking um and they make you think like almost you know it's a mystery and in that moment when i saw that scene i was like that's really clever and mm. then i i almost thought like is the art of this whole documentary again like i might be wrong this is just a random thought i had but is the document is the documentary the catfish like in the in the way he said in what he said like because this documentary it, it does make you think in it like even at the time when it came out a lot of people did think it was fake um yeah. so it is that kind of mystery of like what's real and what's not so i just thought like that would be an incredible piece of art with that being the point of the documentary is the documentary itself is the catfish. You're 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 guessing throughout what's real and what's not. Uh, I just thought that would be really really clever if that, like if they did come up with this idea in creating this, and especially how much they made and what came after for for Neve. Like and this no, this launched be, all their careers. Like this launched the yeah. uh, Henrys and is it Ari Ariel's? Um, yeah. Like their all their careers were launched from this film, um, and like, like you see that what Henry's gone on to do is like um, loads of major feature films and stuff, um, yeah. and yeah, obviously this has completely made Neve like a household name and like you know, yeah. um, but, well, but a household name for some you know for kids and stuff. But, yeah. um, but I, I did really think that when I saw that scene um, with Vince saying that, like I thought one that's like. That's like the speech in like any kind of film or documentary that kind of sums everything up. And I thought it was just so poignant of mm -hmm. him to say that and for them to get it on film and it just to fit perfectly. But yeah, it did really make me think that is the doc like that that speech in itself made me wonder if the documentary itself was the catfish. Um on the subject of Vince though, I need to talk about him <laughs> because he hands down is my favorite person in the whole documentary. I feel like he yeah. is, he just feels so innocent. Um, and it think like thinking about it, it kind of breaks my heart because at this, at the time he's being filmed, he doesn't seem to know anything what's going on. And he's kind yeah. of like in his own little world and he kind of, he kind of comes across a bit dim, like in that sense. But like he has, as you said, that, that speech he says and he's like just spot on and because of it was so poignant uh and they re they named a documentary after him he more or less kind of like invented the term like catfishing in that sense <laughs> he called but, that for, yeah exactly well yeah more or less but i was just thinking after that, i was trying to find out um we're gonna go into this in a little bit but trying to find out what happened to the family and stuff after that and i can't like I just feel like he did he watch this documentary? Did he see this documentary? Did it change his um like mind overall? Because he says this thing to Angela, he's like, you know, she has like these kind of cold feet and you know, he he's kind of aware that she might be doing some I think something like this, and he realizes that, you know, this is what she wants. She wants like uh, the house, the she wants the um the 
the kids, the boys, and um, she wants, you know, to have security and all that stuff. And I just feel like he's going to watch this documentary and just be like, what? Like, what's she well, been he, doing? Like, he, um, he almost is within it when, when he's mentioning about, like, this is what Angela wants. Um, he, he says as well, doesn't he? Like, the, and if it isn't what she wants, then I've told, like, I've told her, we'll find what you want then. So, hmm. Like, there's a sense of me that, that thinks that Vince, like, he is, he's so innocent, and he just wants her to be happy. Like, mm. even if that means the, 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 like, at the expense of his own happiness, um, which is amazing and a lovely thing to say. But, yeah, like, I would think if, if I was him and I saw this documentary, it would be heartbreaking. It would be like, wow, like, mm. like because you you do get a sense that Angela's created all of this. It, again, if 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 it is true, because her life, like, because you do you you get a sense of feeling sorry for her at the end of the documentary. Like, I think you're that's part of the journey is you're kind of once you're kind of realizing what's going on like it'd be easy to just go well angela's the bad guy here like look what she's done she's she's lied so much um but then you see her life and you're like wow like you know maybe that's why she has to create this different narrative for herself like this imaginary world um because it's all she's got other than her life you know that it takes a toll on her um yeah, it's, it's very strange. Um, I did wonder as well, like there's a part in it where towards the end where she mentions mentions that she's got cancer um, and they don't really go into any more of that. Like they do. Obviously at the end, they, 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 they put on the screen, don't they? That the, basically she lied about it. She lied about the cancer. Um, which is insane. And, in a way as well, I'm kind of shocked to a degree. I mean, if it is a documentary, you, you, you know, I suppose as, as a filmmaker, you have to put it all out there, warts mm. and all, no matter what. But, like, something like that, like, there's people that have lost people to cancer. And, you know, to the likes of you and me, we, you know, we would, we would look at that and think that that is heartless. That is, like, so wrong to... to lie about something like that but then i'd imagine there's other people that would want to find this woman for saying something like that there's you know some crazy people out there so i i i even wondered like like is it is it safe for them to put that out there like did angela know that 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 this would be in the documentary how much does she know about what's being put into this documentary like I I feel like I feel like that was the point of no return on her like lies in that sense because yeah I feels like she you know she could easily dial back and um be you know she she making all those profiles and stuff you know that's fair enough I mean because at the end she says like oh she's reduced all down closes them down and there's nothing wrong with her having some kind of online persona that you have like a cool lifestyle and stuff um yeah. and be someone else because that's what the internet was like you know that's what it's about like originally around that time you know yeah. you you could be someone else you can be the best version of yourself you can be uh you know you don't you wouldn't share the bad stuff about your life you'd only put like oh the holiday photos and stuff and like oh i've been going out and doing this um you won't be like oh i'm pretty sad you know and that kind of stuff um but i feel like after after she said that she had cancer, I feel like that was the point she couldn't come back from, right? Because where does that go from there? Like, oh, actually, no, I've, I've, you know, I don't have cancer anymore because it kind of makes her look like a piece of shit. Like when she says that, because yeah, I, oh, I don't know. It's I got she could it, she uh... could have easily come back, and I think that's why she wasn't um in the focus after that because I think that's the one thing where she would. She, you know, she could say, oh, you know, I was having a really tough time dealing with like, you know, those family problems, um, having to deal with uh, the boys uh, that yeah. she has. 
And, you know, she wanted some escape. But to say that she has cancer, that kind of, I think it was like her kind of, oh, uh, you can't, you can't like layer it all, you can't all blame me because I'm like super stressed and, you know, cancer, you can't really go into that too much. But... Exactly. I, I, I felt well, I, like, because I, I forgot that she said that, like, when mm. I watched it the other night and I was, that was a shocking part to me because I was like, wow, I, I don't remember her saying that, like, when I first watched it. That's so fucked up. Mm. Um, but, like I, I took from it that that was a moment where she, that was her clutching at straws, like that was her kind of like almost get out of jail free card. Like, oh, if I say I've got cancer, nobody's going to argue with that. No one's going to say, you know, every everyone would be like, oh well, you know, like that's the, that's the kind of card you can put up. Like if you if you did have cancer, people would just straight up understand why you've made this stuff up like this other stuff and they wouldn't question it because they're like, well, the lady's going through enough. Like, uh, let's just leave her be. Um, so I did look at that as her kind of clutching at straws moment, like pressure was on her in that moment. And that's what she grabbed at. And obviously later down the line, she, you know, I imagine she came clean to Neve about it, that she was making that up. Um, because she probably felt quite awful about saying it. Or did they just, I don't know, like, I, I just still feel that, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not siding with her on saying it. Like, I, it's wrong, like, to say anything like that. But I, I do wonder if the filmmakers have a duty of care to this woman by putting that out there. Like, yeah. And again, you could say, well, she said it, so, you know, she knew she was being filmed at the time. Um, so it's on her, it's her onus, like, she has to own that. But at the same time, I, I do think there is possibly a duty of care to be, like, you know... I think that's the, the main thing I kind of struggle with with this whole documentary is, if it is real, then, like, how much is she aware of what's going to be in this documentary about her, like... And why do you not ever get any of that conversation in there? Like where mm. they're explaining, do they not explain to her? Or did they just shock her one day and go, oh, by the way, you know, in, in theatres Friday this week, <laughs> you're starring you. Like, can you do that? Is that allowed? Um, well, she would have to sign off on this. Um, yeah. Like, otherwise you would see like blurry face, like a blurry face, like uh, in the whole thing. But which, which again makes me wonder if like, if Neve and the gang like almost used her artwork as a kind of like dangling carrot, like, mm. okay, we you know, if you allow us to use you in this, therefore we will, you, millions of people will see your artwork. It will be exposure like you've, you could only dream of. Um, and therefore it can create a, a better future for you with your art. Like, I do wonder if that was maybe the, the kind of dangling carrot they they put in front of her. Yeah, I yeah I, I see that. I feel like you know the, that's probably one reason why she signed on. But it just feels like kind of they could they could easily cut out the cancer thing, have yeah. the documentary, and remove the bit at the end, and you wouldn't have known no different. Um, yeah. It would have been fine. But I think why the filmmakers were putting that in there is because it was like kind of. It was to show her character, like, and how far yeah. she would go to, like, you know, mm. it's like she was trapped in the corner at this point. Like, yeah. she has, like, you know, all the people, uh, like, the filmmakers there, just, and she's trying to, like, justify why she was doing that. But, she, like, you know, even her, just her, her lifestyle at that point could have justified the reason for her escape, you know, like, in yeah. terms of her wanting the escapism. She could have just had that. But I think that was a, yeah, that was a bad choice on her part because I think it kind of takes you away from sympathizing with her to kind of think, oh, you know, like yeah. it kind of, I, it's the, it's the last I, blow of the documentary, isn't it? It's like the last I, I, twist. I do still think that, or from my part, like again, if if it is true, um, I do still sympathize with her, like because I I feel that she did feel it's so strange because you. I feel she did feel backed into a corner and I don't think anyone would say anything like, I mean, most nine out of 10 people wouldn't say that in any situation, like, because it's just, 
it's plain and simple wrong. Mm. Um, but I feel for her to have said that, like, like she's just, she's just a, you know, she's not a filmmaker. If she's not an actress, anything like this, she's just a, a normal woman that was going about her day and all of a sudden she gets a knock on her door and it's this guy she's been lying to all this time. That right. in itself must have like driven her wild with anxiety. Um, and it it is almost like that animal backed in the corner, like nowhere else to go. Like you're just, it's f fight or flight almost like, and she chose that, which is wrong on so many levels. But to a degree, like there's the understanding of like, you know, she's she's just this woman. Like, she's she's like, even that they're all prepared. They know what's coming. They they're mm. the ones like going to kind of face this person. Um, whereas she is, everything's just sprung on her. Um, so I think there is a, a definite degree of fight or flight there for her. Um, and I, I think she was she was trapped in a lie, wasn't she? She was trapped in a yeah. lie, and like <laughs> even the bit where she's kind of reveal, you know, when she's at the horse um, ring place, I don't know whatever it is the horse the horse place where she was with Neve and that, <laughs> and uh, like it was all slowly coming out, and um, you know, she was like, ah, oh, you know, I'm sorry, and like even she even tried to say like, oh yeah, like I do have a daughter, and she is in rehab and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Oh, about Megan. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and that reminds me. Um, there was a follow-up, uh, part of this documentary. Um, it was meeting um Amy, the the Amy Gun, is it Gonzalez? Like uh, who was in the girl who was Megan? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The girl the, in the photo. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I watched it um earlier, and <laughs> I mean that felt like it made it more real for me because. After watching that, I uh, like they go to meet her. They f meet her, tell the girl in the photo, and it shows her reaction to you know. They tell it. They basically tell her the whole story, and then say, "And this was Megan, who I was talking to," and give her basically like a, a screenshot of her profile picture, and she's like, "What?" what? Like, and it also has um, the guy who's meant to be Ryan Iverson, I think it was. Um, and he's like sitting there just like really shocked as well. And he's like, what's what's going on? And they even say, um, it's a shame that you couldn't have like had me in the documentary because it could have been like, a, you know, if I was single and like meeting you, it could have been like, you know, like a love story, like them connecting finally, like, you know, um, yeah. which I thought was strange how they didn't do that in the first place. You know, they didn't... Um, they didn't have her in it. They just had like her. They just had the picture. I guess it kind of they needed to release it, and they didn't have time um, to put that part out. But I know that was about a year later, um, about yeah. 2011, from what I seen on the thing. We'll put it in the uh, show notes. Like you definitely need to check that out. So if you've watched the documentary, definitely check this out. Um, I did watch a few interviews with um, like Neve and them, like around the time it came out, and a lot of the questions were, "Is it real?" And they're also saying like, "Don't tell anybody about it. Don't reveal anything. You know, don't let anybody ruin the ending for you." And that was the big marketing behind the film. Don't. Yeah. And that's unheard of in documentaries at the time. It kind of like, it's, it made it kind of super binge worthy. It's like one of those ones that you talk about at the office the next day. You're like, oh, did you watch, you know, that new documentary? You know, it's like one of those. It was like a the filmification. Well, I don't know. I was gonna say the filmification of documentaries, but they are films. But it's. But yeah, um, I mean, that's like like what I said earlier. Like it felt like, especially when it first came out, like it was a documentary that that. It was a documentary for for non documentary fans. Like hmm. there's lots of people who don't like docs. They're it's like, a casual oh, no. it's a super it's a super casual yeah. one isn't it it's and, like you know like, a lot of people find documentaries boring it's just not for them but they could sit and watch that and they'd be absolutely blown away by it because it's so different um but that's what what i meant earlier when i said like it is it's almost like a blockbuster documentary like a blockbuster movie like it's hmm. it's big it's all singing all dancing it is water, water cooler moment at the office the next day like people can it's a thriller their, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, in, in terms, I think we've both mentioned, like, there's, like, in trying to look up anything really since, the first couple of years, there's quite a bit, hmm. but then it kind of goes a bit dead, a bit silent. Um, I did read something, I think, yesterday um, that said that uh, all of, like, Angela carried on speaking to Neve um, afterwards, but as different people. Like she, she was talking to Neve again under different aliases. Ah, okay. Um, and then she came clean to him again, um, and that all of her, all of her online activity was then monitored. So I don't know whether that was by her family or what. Um, but it also said that she, she had like a multiple personality disorder. Ah, okay. Uh, I didn't see that. Where did you see that? Um... Uh, it was again i was just searching through google yesterday last night if you um, find it we'll put it in the yeah. show show notes and stuff because yeah, so uh, we'll link it in the show I notes sp- um, but i just thought it was quite interesting yeah i spent ages trying but to find I- out trying to find out anything that happened to angela in the last like what 10 years like she seems to disappear after I- 2011 it's well i started to wonder if again if if the documentary is real like if everything about it is real and correct like i started to wonder if maybe she had to maybe change her name like because like she would have become famous for all the wrong reasons in this documentary like what are you famous for i'm famous for saying i had cancer when i didn't like that's nobody wants to be famous for that and like i said earlier there's probably a lot of people that you know, that go that extra mile to try and find someone for saying something like that. So I wonder if if maybe she started to perhaps get death threats or if, you know, her life was somewhat in danger, like, after this, and maybe that's why you can't find anything now. Maybe, maybe she truly does have a, a new alias now. Um, I even wondered, like, Again, if it if it is all real, um, if the way to go about making this would have been to not use her real name, like you know, create an alias for the documentary, so therefore you know bad things don't happen afterwards for this woman. Mm. Um, there's lots that, but again, that's why lots of things don't add up to me. Um, I did like the DP think about it yeah i did um when i was searching i did was searching for reddit seeing if there's anything on there whatsoever about um and there was a post about someone um saying that the catfish lady lives in uh, lives in um his town and it was like ask me anything and like nobody said anything whatsoever um yeah and i also found something about uh they're like, oh, what's what's going on? Um, like, what happened to her? And the comment was deleted, but using the magic of the internet, I was able to find out what it said because there's like a website that's dedicated to it. Basically, on Reddit, you can just yeah. have it as removed it, and you can find out what the comments mm-hmm. say. And it basically had like a link to um, like a web, like a Facebook page of an artist and. I was like, oh, wow, this is her. This is her. Like, and it kind of looked it looked a lot like her. Um, and she was an artist as well. And it was the same name, but like, you know. Um, but the problem was I went onto the page and the page said, uh, it looks like Netflix has started showing Catfish again because uh, I'm now getting inundated with Am I This Woman? And it's basically like it's she shares the same name and she kind of looks somewhat yeah. similar to her. Like if anything, she looks she looks mm-hmm. really good for you know if she has like lost a fair bit of weight and changed the hair completely and all that, but she was basically saying yeah. like I'm not this woman like you know this every time Netflix or um, a streaming service starts showing the documentary she gets like inundated with it. Um, yeah, and the art even the artwork is a little bit similar from from what I see. I'm not gonna mm-hmm. I'm not gonna link it because you know like I think she didn't want it to to, to be oh, out yeah, there, but. Um, yeah, I must admit, it was really hard to find in like a lot of the stuff. I know that there's a interview where Neve says um, he he has he does you know maintain contact with Angela at this point. This was probably about um, four or five years. Well, it was about eight years ago actually. This one, and yeah. he kind of basically said like, oh, like he kind of 
I don't want all the questions to be about this. So it's yeah. yeah. So that was interesting. Any? Did you find out anything else about what's? Not really. I I couldn't find anything. Like I did wonder if like with um with Abby like the 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 kid, um I wondered if maybe because even even with her being in this story, this is a child like and like she's being well for starters she's being used by by uh um, Angela throughout um but also like she's being used in this documentary and she's a kid like again the power of the internet like people can look anyone up like it there's th- these are my issues with the documentary being real or not mm. like because again like you, you won't find or, or I couldn't find anything on her um but I wonder if again maybe may, maybe maybe that's for the best um, yeah I think so I think it's like even to us don't even bother searching for Abby um but it's I can imagine she's probably I don't know she's definitely from in a career now where probably nobody knows who she is like and it's uh yeah. you know just like a subtle but, thing but again it, it feels it with the documentary like if if it is fake like the only thing really that kind of makes me think that possibly it isn't is the whole cancer thing um but that's only because like if you if you look at it without that everyone gains from this documentary everyone gains like neither the gang have all gained massively um angela would have gained through her artwork being seen um therefore create you know being able to create a platform for this stuff um but then it, that cancer bit comes up and and that's just like oh well okay well you don't you nobody gains from that i think like, i don't think can't well, vince doesn't i mean he does that poignant bit like where he says like his uh his thing but i don't think overall like his life would benefit from this like no, of course not. Of course not. But then Vince isn't. Vince is almost like a side part in the documentary. Mm. Although he has this poignant moment, which basically creates the name, um, and it probably is one of the for for me. It's one of the best parts of the documentary. Um, like it could be used as the tagline for the documentary. Like his whole speech. I mean, what was, was that? Was the of, name of the documentary? Was it so? Well. Yeah, but even his speech could be used as a tagline, as a quote. Like, it was just really good. It was a pivotal part. Um, but he's a side piece in this in this documentary. Like, he's not who they're aiming at. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's I'm very, very kind of half on half, half and half. Whether I be, in the believability of of this whole thing now after watching it all these years later. And I think it's important that we discuss why it matters if it's real or not, because basically they lost out on shortlist uh, for Oscars, like the year it came out. So it wasn't uh, nominated um, to, for, for an Oscar because it there was questions over its authenticity. Um, and it also matters yeah. because the use of songs in the film uh Mm -hmm. so the bit where um megan sends well angela i guess sends uh neve the song uh by which turns out to be by amy cuny um Mm -hmm. if that was fake that's not fair use and there's there's lawsuits around this right now well i think like not even that far uh, not even that long ago there was lawsuits again for this film because if it's a documentary, legit documentary, and it was just, you know, a fly on the wall at the time, then it's completely fine. It's fair use. You're allowed to use songs that are, like, you know, seen within the... Well, heard within the film, sorry. Um, yeah. If it's engineered in any way possible, then they should be paying rights to... Uh, yeah, aim, yeah, to the labels, to the artists and stuff, because this went on to make three, uh, three million. And, uh, you know, these barely known uh, musicians have like got nothing from this they've seen nothing from the f- song being featured in this film um mm-hmm. and well, i think um I, I read something as well um 
when when it showed at um, Sundance, and uh, I, I forget the guy's name, the one who done uh, Super Size Me. Uh, Morgan Spurlock. That's it, yeah. Apparently, he went up to Neve and crew after watching the documentary and went up to them and actually said to them, that is the best fake documentary I have ever seen. How did you do it? And then they came back, well, that's not fake, it's not fake, it's real, it's 100% real. Um, so it shows even, even other documentary filmmakers had, had this thought that it wasn't quite, you know, all that meets the eye. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at, I mean, Morgan Spurlock's got his hand in every documentary, it seems. Like, look at, uh, we did, yeah, it, Confessions of a Superhero. That He he was presenting that. Um, and he's been on a few others from what I've seen. Um, obviously, his own documentaries, Super Size Me, and um, I think he did a sequel as well, but I didn't watch that. I don't know if you, no. no. But no. yeah, um, I don't know. I think all in all, it's an enjoyable watch. It's a journey to watch, and... I I love showing it to people who haven't seen it and don't know anything about it. But right now, because of catfish being a common term, like it kind of ruins it from the get go. the The title of the film is a spoiler when you think about yeah. it. Yeah, and I I think as well. I think that shows that the documentary. It's I think you could show it to anyone brand new, never even seen seen it before, and they would enjoy the documentary. But I think. I think in that term, it, it holds up, like in terms of it's enjoyable to watch. It's a fun journey to watch. But in terms of, like you say, like Catfish, just just the name of it itself, 10 minutes in, you're going to know what's going on nowadays. So it it doesn't hold up in that respect. Like it's very of its time in that respect. Um, whereas people would watch it now and they would know what is going to happen or they could pretty much piece it together. Um, but I still think anyone new to this documentary would enjoy it. I'd still recommend it to people. Yeah, I'd recommend it. As um, well. I haven't seen it. I, I I think it's a really enjoyable watch. Like I enjoyed, I enjoyed the fact that it'd been so long since I'd seen it, and then watching it again. And like I said earlier, almost looking at it through different eyes and noticing things perhaps I didn't notice the first time round. Um, that was enjoyable. Like, just lastly, like, Angela's voice for Megan, was that believable for you? Would you... I, I personally think it did sound like how I'd imagine her to sound. Um, yeah, yeah, to a degree, yeah. I, and, yeah, I, I think it did sound belie uh, believable enough that it was a different person. Yeah. Like, and... And you've got to think if you're just on the telephone to someone like and you have no reason to believe that it's someone putting on a voice or anything like that, then you know, if 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 your mind isn't already in that place, then you're not gonna really dig too much into yeah. it. And yeah, I, I and if it's the daughter of this other lady, then yeah, there may be similarities. Um so you might go, Oh, that sounds a bit like how how um how she sounds, how Angela sounds, but you think, well, it's her daughter, so of course there's going to be some some likeness to, in the voices. Um, so yeah, I think I would I would have believed it. It really, like, I I don't think I thought about this when I first watched it, but this time watching it, it really made me like kind of like think that wow, like all these pictures and things we you know, pretty much every single one of us on social media posts, like, they can be used, like, we could have 10, 20 other profiles out there in the world with our pictures and someone typing stuff, and and that is us. Like, that's a scary thought. Um, and it'd be very difficult to find as well. As much as people say, oh, you can reverse image search, but the thing is, like... When you upload to Facebook and other social media now, it basically wipes all the information from the photo. So there's no way to like kind of track down, um, you know, the location of you know where the photo was taken and all that stuff. You'd it just yeah, doesn't work. Oh, like, yeah, don't, 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 it was it was used in that, wasn't it? Which one? I'm sorry, it was used in "Don't Fuck with oh, Cats," yeah, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, and "Don't Fuck with Cats." Yeah, um, but it's. 
I don't know. I think it's easy. Yeah, it's easy to ha you know to see this goes on now nowadays, and I imagine like I, I one it... in or two in ten of people on like half of these dating sites are probably like just make believe anyway. So. Oh yeah, of course, of course, and like I think as well, like I think that's like one kind of good thing that comes from the documentary. Watching it now is it does make you think about that because otherwise, like social media is such a daily part of most people's lives now it's just ingrained into society that people just do it they use their social media almost on an autopilot and they don't really think about what they're posting the pictures they're posting how many pictures they have um and what other people could use these for and no one really thinks about that um but i, I feel that Watching this documentary now, that is something you can gain from it, is just to maybe like start thinking, do I really need to post this many pictures? Do it I I just think it it makes you it makes you wonder and it makes you kind of understand and realize that, you know, you're 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 basically giving all that away and it's then it's in the hands of the world then. Like and you know, there's plenty of people that would, would do with that what they wish to um and that's kind of a scary thought um that i've not really thought about up until watching this again and then kind of just sprung in my mind i was like wow like, <laughs> well i didn't see any problem with i don't know posting pictures and stuff on your like facebook and instagram and stuff because you're sharing those photos you don't expect someone to you know take them and pretend to be you because like god help them if they pretend to be me <laughs> like i mean <laughs> that's yeah good luck with that good luck with that um whereas i i don't know i don't believe i mean just, just make good make your profile private done easy that's it done yeah 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 but it's, it is it's kind of an eerie thought to think that it, even if you know like we joke and we say oh you know good luck you know uh posing as me or whatever mm. but it's an eerie thought to think that someone out there who you don't even know could be using your likeness and pretending to be you yeah. it, it, with a whole new personality a whole you know you're you in pictures only um but everything else is different like that's kind of eerie and creepy um and it it, it obviously is done like you know, people, you know, even from this, whether it's real or not real, like we know that there probably are people out there that, you know, that are creating these alternate realities of themselves and, you know, using other people's photos or using models' photos or what whatever photos they want to use. But there is a there's a creepy aspect to that with if it if it was you, if if like if you found out today someone was actually doing that and you visited a facebook page or whatever and it was it was everything about it was you apart from the interactions the friends mm. the everything that was being put out there like that would be really surreal and and eerie to see and to witness like if you hear about it about someone else you know you it's it's creepy still be like oh well it's not me but then if you if you actually found that about yourself, that would be kind of oh, yeah, send shivers down my spine a bit. I have that, you look at it in the other way, whereas all the hard work is done for you. People have made, you know, people someone's made friends for you. And all you gotta do is pretend, you know, just take their place, jump in. Like, hey, I'm me. Like but but, but this is what I mean, you you may never find this, so you'll never, you know, you'll you might not even know that you know jerry from new york and your good friends on facebook like it's just it's it's so strange like and i, f I feel as well like there is a big part of this documentary and the, and the kind of good thing about watching it all the all these years later is like we were kind of all very naive to social media back when it came out um and i think you kind of realize that on the rewatch of it now like how much more we know and how much how much more it's like like i said earlier it's almost like an advert at this documentary at the time like it is almost like an advert for all these different like media platforms and things um whereas now it is like 
like we do a lot of us use this stuff without even really thinking like it's just an an average part of any other day like posting something or or whatever um and and i don't feel that like, like let's say facebook i don't feel it's used in the same way it was back then like it was more back then of like a, a congregation of your friends whether they be real life friends that you you met up with and you know gone to the pub with or whatever or whether they be just friends that you've met online and you've never actually met but you speak to like whereas now it's i don't feel that facebook's really used for that as much nowadays perhaps messenger yeah um you know you can keep in contact which is basically the same as texting someone um but yeah i feel like now like like a uh, Facebook page is more like, it's almost like an advert for you. Right. Like these are the things I like. These are the things I do. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a different world in that short amount of time. I, since this, was I just made, don't think it, this film can exist in 2021, I think. And, and not because of like the coronavirus or that. Um, I'm all about basically it would be, Oh, okay. Uh, this girl's doing uh, paintings of my work and stuff like that. Uh, instead of flying all the way across the country or meeting them or whatever, uh, Zoom. There you go. Done. Problem solved. That's the documentary over, guys. Roll the credits. Uh, like it's like I I think that's the only difference between now and then is like now video. Um, even back then you had bloody MSN and stuff. You could easily go on. Yeah, exactly. But you find even through watching, I know it's probably not the best thing to to go on, but even through watching the Catfish TV series, like oh, yeah. They, they always go into, well, why didn't you video chat? Why didn't you do this? And something always comes up, like, which should be a red herring to begin with if every time you go to speak on video chat, there's something that comes up, oh, can't do it today, washing my hair. Can't do it today, you know, the horse has broke its leg, I need to go <laughs> sort the horse out. Like, I don't know, but, but it would be like, you know, initially if someone kept not going on video chat, then most people would kind of fathom that okay something's something's not right here um or they could even use the excuse of i you know i i'm i'm anxious about going on video camera i, I don't like doing that so therefore you would never see that person like through video form um so i think there's still it could still happen in this day and age because there's always something that can get in the way of a video meeting like anyway so i think that's it i think we've done it we've done catfish we've talked about it um i think we've covered all the bases that we wanted to cover uh all in all i would still recommend it to people um as we said earlier um and uh, yeah i i think it's definitely had a major influence on the social media storytelling um that has you know come on since like in different documentaries like we mentioned yeah don't fuck with cats and uh american murder american murder is like a good one to to um you know for social media storytelling anyway i think all in all like 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 we both said like we would still recommend it like i think it is a fun documentary to watch and it's fun as well like the aspect of wondering if it's real or not like that's almost like a fun part of the discussion of a documentary as well. So like if, you know, if you found someone that had never seen it before and they're a friend of yours and you're like, okay, watch this tonight. And uh, you know, I want to hear your thoughts tomorrow. There's the fun aspect of that conversation the next day with someone with completely fresh eyes to it and, and seeing how they take it in. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it's a, it's a great piece of, art almost like in what it is um and art being that thing that can be looked at in many different ways um yeah i i still really enjoyed it i enjoyed i enjoyed the aspect of not seeing it in such a long time and then looking at it through slightly different eyes um yeah i really enjoyed it i think it's good i'd still recommend it i'd, I'd watch it again maybe not now but yeah, 10 years 10 point. years 20 yeah. guys maybe, 20 maybe, 30 maybe 20 30 we'll do like a recap 
from podcast. Maybe that maybe that's the best way. Um and yeah, it's um it's very interesting to see what what was created after for the people involved in this documentary and and how their career careers have just like they they're kind of glowing now for them and it, it was this this documentary for a lot of them opened up lots of doors and probably have made them a hell of a lot of money yeah um so whatever way you look at it real or fake you know they've you know you can't blame them they've 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 put something out there it's created opportunity they've grabbed that opportunity and they've ran with it um so you know more power to them i guess yeah they yeah this that's it guys catfish don't let anybody tell you what it is <laughs> <laughs> and that's it i think for this episode um it's been good thanks for listening everybody um good to be good back to be back, to be back. Uh, expect the next episode soonish we're not gonna put a date on when these are coming out they, they will come out you know every so often so be sure to um subscribe to us uh you can send us a message on the socials uh that are in the show notes um yeah it'd be good to hear from you send us an email let, let us know what you thought of catfish um and yeah we'll be sure to respond anyway <laughs> thanks for listening everybody bye yeah Bye-bye.